at the bins and I wanted to make a little video about how I do the bins. I know bins are different everywhere so um, I'm just going to share what things I use and what tools I use to have the most ease when I'm picking at the bins. So I always, number one, wear gloves. I like these gloves that have a little bit of rubber on them. I bring a bag to put on my shoulder, one of the big blue Ikea bags. Um, when you're picking through the bins, you put these items in this bag on your shoulder. And then when it gets full, I bring these zippered bags from Ikea and I'll show them when I'm inside to put my stuff in along the edges of the bins. Basically, there's no guarantee that you will find a shopping cart when you go to the bins. Every bin video I watch, people use shopping carts. And honestly, I am able to get a shopping cart maybe one out of 10 times that I come to the bins. So let's go inside and see what we can find. I will shoot some video inside of people waiting and picking. It looks like there's a lot of people here today. Um, so let's just see what happens. There are definitely a lot of lulls when going to the bins. It's a good time to sort items and look closely at things you've already picked, waiting for 10 new bins to be rotated. Here's a Hulk in bag in the wild. If you feel paper inside of a pocket, be sure to reach into that pocket. It could be $20. Here's my stuff. I find cloth to put over my items sitting on the side. These are hard good bins. There is a section that has all clothing. It's on the opposite side of this space. So the employees tell you when you can go to the bins. As you can see, everybody's waiting to pick something. The employees will tell you when you can start shopping. If you start shopping before they say so, they will kick you out back behind the blue line. Warning, people are very rough when they are searching through hard goods and there can be broken glass. That's why gloves help a ton. When I'm fortunate enough to find shoes at the bins, sometimes I will pick up brands that I normally wouldn't purchase at a higher price point when I'm sourcing from a thrift store. So maybe some of these items I would have never really purchased before, they're new brands to me. Some of them are tried and true brands. These are a pair of Lucky Brand stacked heel. I would call them a peep toe booty, but they are technically a sandal. Really nice condition, so I pick them up. It's funny because they're like a size five, but when you look at them, they look more like an eight. Very weird. The next slides I picked up are the brand called Arch. I'm gonna turn them this way so you can see they've got a really cool outer sole. This brand is very high-end, sells at like Bloomingdale's and stuff. Um, there's just a little bit of wear to these. I'm not gonna be pricing them at a high price point, maybe $25. I did pick up these dance goes that are brown and have like a gold tone to them. The sole is in really great shape. The suede is worn in. I'm definitely gonna post them. I would say $25 as well. Picked up just a pair of Joseph Cybel, probably I'm butchering that, leather shoes in nice condition. I basically, I things at the bins that I could post for $25, $28, $32 or higher. Um, if I sell something for $15 that I got at the bins through an offer, then I will happily take that if it's an item that 
I just feel like has wear or something that I priced closer in the $20 to $25 range. These next ankle boots are super cute. The brand is Cordani Italy. I tend to go for anything that feels like it's a really nice leather and those were made in Italy. So even if I don't recognize the brand, but they're leather made in Italy, it's a win to me. I did pick up a pair of DV Dolce Vita. These are the for Target ones. You can tell they're not the quality of the Dolce Vita that you can find in Nordstrom. They did this collaboration line. This is what that label looks like when it is the Target collaboration. It will say Dolce Vita if it's the regular line. It's in a pair of men's Doc Martin. It's just a loafer style Doc Martin. And I thought they were in really nice shape. I know if you like wearing Doc Martens and you have to wear shoes for work or just prefer an Oxford style shoe. I mean, that's a slip on, it's not an Oxford, but if you prefer a low shoe, then I think there might be a market for it. They're not very high value for those. I also, cause I do sell a lot of dance goes and I greatly appreciate that resellers just will not pick up dance goes anymore because now I get to sell them for like $65. It's like my favorite thing ever. People just are like, no, I don't want those. And I'm like, please, may I have those? These are a pair of vegan dance goes, which I've never sold before, but they were in such great shape. I mean, honestly, I'm not sure if these were even worn. So I don't know what the market is on vegan dance goes or the retail, they're a size 40, which is a nine in dance goes, eight and a half, nine in dance goes. The next brand I've never picked up before, but just this style of boot is very popular. The maker of this boot is Vagabond. These boots did have some wear to them, but once again, I cleaned them up last night. You can see the scuffs in the toe. Someone had these and put them back sort of right in front of me. Another pair of Doc Martens. And so I picked up two odd Doc Martens. I've actually never sold Doc Martens. These are the industrial line. So they have a steel toe to them. They kind of have a more Timberland style. They are a smooth leather, but they have this marking here, which makes them look a little bit more like a work boot. Brand I've never heard of before. These are selling new with tags on Posh. Ironically enough, pretty much all in a size 10 or 11, which is a little weird. These are made in Italy. They're called like the urban knee high boot. The name on them is Franco Boschi, and they are made in Italy. I would say they're styled after Prada boots. I used to own a pair of Prada boots that were ankle height, but very similar to this. Next up is a pair of Steve Madden boots. These are not free birds, unfortunately, but they're modeled after them. These are called the Roadie. They're just a very basic Steve Madden boot. This colorway with the blue zipper seems to have better comps than the brown ones with the red. But I found a pair of Melissa button boots. These are a size 10, which I'm very happy about. They're shiny looking. They have like a crackle distressing to them. I believe it's actually called a crackle. And so they're in nice shape. They're a size 10. I will definitely price these at around $150 and see where it goes. Open to offers, flexible thinking. And the last pair of boots that I got at the bins, the brand is OTBT. I don't know what that stands for. These are just actually, I would say really modeled off of the Fry Melissa boot, the button boot. It might be, oh, El Vaccaro, El Vaccaro. 80s original Apache boots. I'm gonna show you this tag. They actually had a collab with Free People. So their boots when they sold at Free People were closer to like $450. Find the size 37 there on the inner sole when I took it out and this is the label. 
So I do have a thrift store that I go to occasionally and they have some really nice high-end shoes and they mark them up. These boots retail for about $500 and so I paid 50 for them. I'm hoping to sell them for 150, 175. And I do think making $100, $75 is a really great profit margin. You do have to put out that $50 initially compared to, I probably got all the shoes at the beginning of this video for $50. So sometimes I think it's worth spending the little extra money on items that I know will do well on Poshmark. I saw comps on these, I saw sales. A lot of the ones that are available are brown. These are black. They have a lot of attributes to them that I think people are interested in. They're definitely a moccasin festi festival style boot, which I just think is a little bit timeless now. I am gonna keep everyone posted on how these boots do. It's definitely a risk, I think, investing $50 in a pair of boots. So we'll see. The other part of me thinks I'm spending money at an organization that is a charity. It's a wildlife rehab charity. So when I spend money there, it helps support the animals. And I feel like it's a win-win situation. I'm supporting a charity that does good. I'm investing a little bit. It makes me a little bit nervous to spend $50 on boots, but here we are. I did it. And then I spent $50 on 10 pairs of shoes and we'll just see how they do. I'll keep everyone posted as things sell on what's had a big walk this morning. Did you have a walk? Did you have a fun walk? Yeah, you did. And now you're sleeping. Oh, I'm going to take some pictures and you're going to be a good boy. I hope everyone is doing well. If you like this video, as we all say, as everyone says, you could give me a thumbs up. You could subscribe. I also have recently been saying, I don't know what I'm going to post next. It's just kind of the experience of this process. I love sharing it. I hope that you're picking up some tips and ideas, maybe seeing brands that you want to try to pick up. This is part of the clothing haul from when I went to the bins. I have just cleaned and dried and steamed and processed a bunch of stuff that I haven't photographed yet, but I wanted to share what I picked up. So I have a lot of stuff. Let's get started. This is a really fun find. I saw this plaid and was like, ooh, what's that? And now, granted, I live in Colorado, so these sort of ear flap hats really are common to find, but not in a cool plaid. And then you'll probably recognize that logo right there. This is a true religion hat, and it turns out that this is, I don't want to say vintage, but it's a little bit older on the true religion side and people collect these. I think I'm going to post this for around a hundred dollars. It's really well constructed and warm. I just have to get it up like ASAP. Like I had to get it up yesterday. The next item I have, the brand is called English Factory. This is a brand that's new to me. I've never picked up English Factory before. It's a sweater top and it's a tool with a lining bottom. It's a dress. It is, doesn't, it's not detachable. It's all one piece and it's super cute. I thought, of course, as I have said in the past, like I had very much Sarah Jessica Parker, Carrie vibes from Sex in the City. Oh, by the way, Louie is here with us today. Can you say hi, Lou? He's sleepy, so he's just hanging out on the bed. My next find is truly a bins only kind of purchase. Would not have picked this up. It's a Gryffindor scarf. And there is, you know, just your basic. It is Harry Potter branded wizarding world so fair to assume maybe that it came from universal not sure i think it did though it also had the sweater i happened to find both so 
I feel like, there we go, that wasn't focusing. So I decided, okay, I'll pick it up because it's both otherwise and the bins. Otherwise, mm, not selling a lot of Harry Potter stuff. I did grab one more accessory because I think I manifested this at the bins and it is super cool. So this pillow is cross-stitchy wool vibes and the brand is Jonathan Adler. I often source pillow covers, duvets, sheets at the bins and shh, don't tell anybody. There's money to be made there. And it was funny because I was at the bins and I was like, wouldn't it be so cool? Literally, I thought to myself to find Jonathan Adler and not even moments later, I look over and see part of this pillow. I think I saw the lips and I saw just the detail of it. It's like super textured and just lovely. And I saw part of the velvet and I was like, ooh, it caught my attention. What is that? No one else was interested in this. A lot of the times when there's household items in the bins, people will just walk right past it because they don't want to be bothered. And I actually get so excited. I'm like, I will take that bin. This was super cute. Silky kimono. The brand is actually Old Shanghai. And I do have the belt to it. I just didn't wash the belt but it has this floral with peacock print pockets in the front. Very pretty. It feels like silk, but I can guarantee it is not silk. There is no material tag present, but I'm just gonna call it not silk, but feels like silk. I picked up this Athleta very soft and cozy open cardigan. I, looking at it closer, it does have a lot of pilling, so I'm on the fence about posting that, maybe at a cheaper price point. As always, I love picking up Patagonia. These are just the stand-up shorts, I believe they're called. I don't know why. There we go. That's not focusing. They're kind of this five pocket style. They have a little pocket up here, then they have these two pockets. They're organic cotton, but the feel of the material is like Carhartt pants. I have already sold three pairs of these shorts. I have one pair currently posted and they're just, they just sell very well. They're this is very soft and I'm on the fence if this is a man's or a woman's. The label and the brand is just REI Cooperative. It's kind of a cropped quarter zip very soft pullover didn't look for comps on that i just liked the style of it is lilka l-i-l-k-a i've never picked up this brand before let's see if i can get that to zoom i did read on the materials tag that it was made for anthropology it is a romper that is a very drop drop crotch I guess you could say and this is the leg to it the top is just elastic I have never sold this brand before Airy and Ally seems like it could be an anthro brand but I haven't checked the tags yet what's interesting about this it's a mock neck it's kind of a jersey knit but it's super stretchy like look at the give and the stretch in this so it's cropped and striped and textured and soft checks all the boxes for things I like to pick up so a Denver Nuggets jacket it's currently on the logo side but you can also wear it on this side I would say comps on this are pretty good I think I can post it for $75 $80 um, Unk is the brand, kind of like Dunk without the D, NBA branded. It does have pilling here, so I'll spend a little time to kind of get the pilling out of that waistband. This was a new pickup for me. I have actually never found Patagonia board shorts before. So these are Patagonia super cool prints and colorway 
board shorts for men. Here's the tag. A little bit on the worn side. Size 32. Zip pocket. It's got some, you know, a tie at the waist. Just your real classic board short. It also has the logo down here. Excited about that. This brand is also, I've never sold before, Laka USA. I picked it up simply because of the style. So this is a tiered maxi dress, which I find to be very popular. Neutral and color pockets, definitely a go for me. These are just Royal Robins. Also another brand sold at REI. I pick these up because they actually look like they have never been washed or worn. They're just a woman's hiking short, have things like lots of pockets, Velcro pockets that are really, really deep, zip pocket. Not sure the comps on those, but I'm sure I will post them for around $25. This was an interesting pickup. If you take a closer look here, some of you may recognize this. It says Pleasant Company. So Pleasant Company was the start of American Girl. That was, I was watching a woman go through the bin and she just like totally passed up this fabric. And I was, it just caught my eye, like what is that? So I go over and I pull it out and I did not expect to find a girl's dress. So Pleasant Company is what the company was called that is now, as we know it, American Girl. So this dress is actually a Josephina dress and they make the outfits for the girl and the doll. I obviously do not have the doll dress. This is, I'm gonna comfortably say, a vintage American Girl doll dress. Nisa Lynn. It was made in the USA and I just thought it was really lovely like the it's a fit and flare dress it's heavy weight poplin i would say um a really pretty pattern i couldn't find many comps on this brand believe it or not but i think i'm gonna post it for around 48 dollars this was a fun find this a lot of you will know what this is when you see it this is a Disney Parks Spirit Jersey. This Spirit Jersey in particular is a little bit more of a unique style. It's a size small. This is the, oh my goodness, Briar Rose Spirit Jersey. So it's a peach pink color with gold puffy Disney on the front and Disney World on the back. It does have a flaw to it and I have washed this. It seems like it could be a bleach stain or some other mark there. So I will list, I will put that in the listing. I have seen these selling for up to a hundred dollars. So I'm really curious to see what it actually sells for with the flaw. There's the other tag. This brand I've never sold before. Faraday is the brand. It's just a men's button down kind of t-shirt, a little bit different. It's really nice and soft. I would pass on things like that at a regular thrift store because of the price point. If you're investing $6 on a t-shirt, it's basically a glorified t-shirt and can sell it for $20, $25. I don't really like that profit margin, but at the bins, if I'm picking it up for $1.50, it seems worth it to me to pick up brands that I would say are probably more sought out than something like a mall brand like The Gap. This shirt is American Giant. I was happy to find this. I have sold an American Giant sweatshirt and it sold within two weeks and I picked it up at the bins. This is just a deep purple long sleeve t-shirt. Their clothes are made in the USA and as far as I can tell, do really well. I'm not sure about t-shirts, but I definitely picked it up. This flannel is called Howler Brothers, and it has this little 
howler monkey on the back of it. It's just a very nice colorway. It's just your basic men's flannel shirt. This is what the tag looks like. It feels like a chambray, but it's dark. It's a light denim jumper. It's got a wide leg, buttons in the front, has a little bit of a stretch elastic back. This is Lauren Conrad, and the reason why I picked it up was because it was an XXL. It's got buttons in the front, super cute, lightweight, great for spring. I usually don't sell rompers, so I'm curious to see how it does. Piggybacking on that, I also found this from H&M denim coverall suit. This is more like a size six, very cute. For the first time ever, I found soft surroundings skirt. I have never found a skirt before and it's a long maxi skirt with this really cute sort of aztec -y and floral print to it. It's a beautiful light blue with turquoise and purple. I'm really curious to see how soft surrounding skirts do. I have done great with soft surrounding tops. Here's a pair of just basic BDG Urban Outfitters. These are boot cut, distressed is how they come, light wash. I sell BDG for around $32. Those look to be in good shape. They could potentially go to the buy sell trade store and I'd just make some very quick money on them. This was fun. Erica and Co. This is a vintage denim jumper. Of course I picked this up because I just loved these button details. Floral buttons. I think it's a Marshalls brand. It's just a lace cotton sleeveless top. New with tags. White in great condition. This is a fun find. Joe's jeans. Don't pick up Joe's jeans. I will at the bins occasionally, but um, these are some graphic print in the front and black in the back. I just thought the unusual nature of the print and it being a black and white and gray print that I would go for it. This is a free people sweater. I thought about taking this to buy, sell, trade, and then I realized maybe I will try to sell it first, just the regular classic tag. It's a very wide, loose fit, gray, really fun detail of buttons on the neck, and just some diamond detailing on the sleeves and throughout the body. It is cropped, oversized. It's a really fun 1X, 2X by J. Jill. It's just a lightweight summer cotton. You can feel it to the beach. Vacation cardigan. It's a lace stitch, lightweight. Super excited for that. I have sold before one of these. This is a hell bunny dress, new with tags. The last dress that I sold, this is a brand from England. It sold pretty quickly, I would say within three weeks. Also seem to always pick up a coat when I go to the bins, a heavy coat. And I found this men's Zara. It's a wool blend coat. Could not have any wool in it, but it feels like a wool blend coat. It's just your basic. It's not really a pea coat. It's just an overcoat, a animal print kick it jeans. There's a cropped version that seems to do really well on Poshmark. And this is a little bit of a longer line. It is a, well, it looks like the size tag is cut out, but I want to say it's closer to a large or an extra large pair of new with tags, monkey monkey PJs was able to locate the top and the bottom. Of course, I have a soft spot for anything that is ski themed. You know, sometimes when I'm at the bins, I'm like, I can't leave that behind. I have to rescue that item. The next two items are the rescuer and me. I picked up two granny square quilts. It's just kind of greens and a light brown and a yellow 
and cream color. Very pretty. The next one I also found is actually white and it has a coral color and a pink color flower to it. They're both, this one has fringe, the other one doesn't. They're both about 80 inches by 60 inches, so they're a really great size. They're almost, I would say, twin size. I'm not gonna market them or advertise them that way. I'm just gonna advertise them as throws. But I will confess, the other night I did have this one on and it is so warm, it's so warm. And interestingly enough, there is a market for them on Poshmark right now. People are buying those and people are buying ones with the really bright colors. So hopefully they'll like the style that I picked up. I got this because, well, first the colors, it has flowers and birds and it's super soft and it turns out it's just a throw. The brand is Elove and it says houseware and trimmings. So what sealed the deal for me was that it was actually made in Portugal, which I just think is really nice quality. It's so soft and just so pretty. I have a feeling that this will be one of the items that sells right away, along with the Jonathan Adler pillow, which is hilarious because I go there and I buy all these clothes and I wash them and I steam them and I photograph them. And then the first things to sell in my closet will be this blanket or this pillow or this hat. And then I'm like, why did I spend my time on all this stuff? But we do it. It caught my eye. I wanted to bring this stuff home. So what do you think? Would you pass on these items? Anything you wish you could have found at your own bins? Anything that does really well for you or has been sitting in your closet? As always, I would love to hear. I learn so much from other people and although I tend to go with the aesthetic that I prefer and my eye, it's always good to be on the lookout for particular brands and step out of my regular comfort zone and see what I can do and what, what, I, what kind of sales I can make. I hope everyone's having a good day. If you like this video, please subscribe. Take care.